Number 13, teeth all over. Your body can grow some truly nasty things inside of it. But did you know some of those things could theoretically take a bite out of you? I'm talking about a teratoma, which is basically a tumor with crazy design features like teeth. Teratomas are tumors made up of tissues, such as hair, muscle, and bone. They seem to like things lower down, having reportedly been found in the testicles and ovaries, among other places. Now, when I say a teratoma has teeth, it isn't developing a face or anything. That's just what it happens to be made out of. Though, as some can feature hair, it does sound like a character of sorts. Whatever it is, it's making me feel weird just talking about it. Number 12. You lose bones as you grow up. Did you know the skeleton you have now probably isn't the one you were born with? Don't panic, you haven't stumbled into an episode of The X-Files. This is all part of growing up. Obviously, when you grow and develop from infancy, your bones get bigger. However, you also have more bones as a baby. Weird, right? When you arrive in the world, your skeleton has approximately 300 bones, but these fuse together, leaving you with 206 bones as a standard. That's not all. Your skeleton regenerates and replaces itself as time goes by. You own a newly grown skeleton every decade, in fact. During your first 30 years or so, your bones are going full throttle, regenerating and doing their thing. You'll typically be able to handle more of the tough stuff. Hitting middle age means things slow down a little, and the amount of bone you lose versus that which replaces it is at a neck and neck race. As you age further, it's a case of losing bone mass and getting weaker. All part of the deal of life, I'm afraid. Not much you can do to hold back the tide. Though it's recommended you exercise and try to keep as healthy as possible. Treasure your bones while you still have them. They're apparently as strong as steel. You shouldn't put that to the test too vigorously though. So your skeleton does a lot more than hold your skin and cartilage in place. It's a form of life in its own right. No bones about it. Number 11, you can dream in black and white. 12% of people dream in black and white. Why do some people dream in color and others in black and white? Truth be told, we don't entirely know, but it makes for one weird story, right? A plausible explanation is that our media influences how we experience such events. Historically, dreams were reported in monochrome. This was circa 1900, when black and white film gave people a two-tone view of the world around them. Back before the 20th century, dreams were apparently in color. It's likely films and newspapers affected people's vision. As for what exactly happened there in a scientific sense, the jury is still out. Brightside explains the vast majority of the light-sensitive cells in your retina are for black and white. That's 130 million of them compared to a mere 7 million for color. Interesting. When more reports of color dreams began in the 1960s, guess what the theory was? That's right, the use of color TV and movies in color contributed to a more true-to-life type of dreaming. How do you dream? Are your nighttime experiences like a black and white film noir or a whole Technicolor epic? Let me know in the comments below. Number 10, your lighter eyes may be pain deflectors. If your pain threshold is high and you have blue or green eyes, chances are the two things are linked. The Your Sight Matters website highlights a study by Anna Belfer from the University of Pittsburgh. She examined the reactions of pregnant ladies to pain stimuli and presented her findings in 2014. Lighter eyes seem to suggest a greater tolerance. Freaky or what? Having said that, the human body has a habit of throwing curveballs. So while the likes of blue-eyed people might be resistant to pain, they don't like light. Or at least they're more sensitive towards it than their dark-eyed counterparts, a symptom known as photophobia. How come? A lighter colored eye doesn't contain enough pigment to shut out strong sources such as sunlight. In that sense, the pigmentation in someone with, say, brown eyes acts like a pair of curtains. Are your eyes sensitive to light? How's your pain tolerance? Let me know in the comments below. And if you're liking this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. Number nine, super long blood vessels. Though blood vessels are relatively pretty small, the network is amazingly long. 
In fact, the National Institute on Aging, NIA, calculates that if they were laid out in a line, they would measure more than 60,000 miles in length. Considering that the circumference of the Earth is 24,873.6 miles, according to NASA, that means your blood vessels could circle the globe more than twice. And those super long blood vessels are continuously flowing. Every day, your heart pumps about 1,800 gallons of blood through these super long blood vessels. Number eight, you are made of stardust. What's that now? We know the human body is made of flesh and bone. What's lesser known is our connection to the solar system. All of us contain some element that arrived from space. In fact, stars are responsible for a lot of the stuff we take for granted down on planet Earth. The periodic table that many of us only remember from school. Where do you think those elements came from? Well, they wouldn't be with us had a star not gone supernova. If you don't know what a supernova is, it's when a star is destabilized. When the ingredients of a celestial body go out of whack, it becomes too difficult for the star to hold itself in position. So it explodes in a spectacular fashion, a supernova. Naturally, with such a blast, you get stuff scattered far and wide, which is how cosmic debris wound up here. On landing, it formed into various things, and of course, animals and other life forms. And according to Dr. Ashley King, writing for the Natural History Museum, there may be more than one supernova involved. Explosion after explosion, passing bits along until they reach their final destination, us. That's gotta make you think. Stardust rained down and life sprang from it. Apparently, a grain of stardust is 100 times smaller than a human hair. Speaking of which, your hair is a product of these supernovas. Or if you're bald, your skinhead. Either way, it's fantastically weird. Number seven, your daily farts could fill a balloon. Another one for the weird things you need to know file. Everybody farts. Don't try and pretend you don't. You know how the old saying goes, if you denied it, you supplied it. It's an inevitable fact of the human body that our air intake combines with natural gas in our system, and sooner or later, it's going to escape in the form of a fart. How much gas is actually produced by the human butt every day? Amazingly, 25 ounces worth, which is enough to inflate a balloon. Number six, your brain is a battery. Did you know your brain is a seriously juiced up electrical power source? That's right, as far as your noggin is concerned, sparks will fly. In addition to shooting signals around the human body, it has enough power to illuminate a light bulb. Now, when I say illuminate, I'm not talking about a brilliant bright light. Around 10 to 25 watts can travel from your brain to the bulb. Eureka! The energy comes from neurons, nerve cells found in your mind muscle. Because you have an astonishing 100 billion of these neurons up there, it means your brain is also a battery. I'm not entirely sure how you'd go about hooking up your neurons to a light bulb in the first place, but hey ho, it's still a cool and very weird fact to think about. I hope I'm providing you with enough info here to keep that electricity surging through your headspace. Number five, taste buds. Did you ever wonder why your favorite foods taste so good? Well, you can thank your taste buds for letting you appreciate the sweetness of candy and ice cream and the saltiness of your favorite chips. Taste buds are sensory organs that are found on your tongue and allow you to experience tastes that are sweet, salty, sour, and bitter. How exactly do your taste buds work? Well, stick out your tongue and take a look in the mirror. See all those bumps? Those are called papillae, and most of them contain taste buds. Taste buds have very sensitive microscopic hairs called microvilli, and those itty bitty hairs send messages to the brain about how something tastes, so you know what you're getting when you take a bite. The average person has about 10,000 taste buds, and they're replaced every two weeks or so. But as a person ages, some of those taste cells don't get replaced. An older person may only have 5,000 working taste buds. That's why certain foods may taste stronger to you than they do to older people. Smoking can reduce the number of taste buds a person has, the more you know. Number four, your body is full of dangerous acid. When it comes to stomach acid, your body does not mess around. The stuff in your guts that melts what you eat is nearly as strong as battery acid. Yeah. 
That means it has a pH scale of between one and three. If that sounds low, bear in mind, zero is the most intense. You are effectively a walking bottle of potassium chloride, sodium chloride, and hydrochloric acid. That's some cocktail. And it's held in check by a thick layer of mucus and bicarbonate created by the body's epithelial cells. This blend not only takes a bite out of your stomach's acid burn, it also acts as the glass on the bottle. Next time you eat too much dinner and your burp feels a little acidic, remember just how dangerous the inside of your tummy can be. Number three, you have a superfluous third eyelid. Remember in Friends when Chandler revealed he had an extra nipple? Or the Bond movie, Man with a Golden Gun, where the villain unveiled his own superfluous third nipple? Why are we talking about nipples? There's a reason, trust me. You see, that ain't the only extra thing a human can have more of. A less X-rated example is what's known as a nictitating membrane, which is not a third nipple, but instead a third eyelid. The nictitating membrane is a transparent or translucent third eyelid very present in the animal kingdom. It can be drawn across the eye for protection and to hold moisture for maintaining visibility. Some birds, reptiles, and even sharks have full nictitating membranes. There are actually many mammals that have a small vestigial portion of the membrane in the corner of the eye. Some mammals such as polar bears, seals, camels, and aardvarks have full nictitating membranes, and some humans do too. Getting its name from nictare, which is Latin for blink, this third eyelid sweeps in from the side, or at least it did with human beings. However, we only have a fold remaining called the plica semilunaris, and that doesn't do anything just as well, really, as it would look pretty freaky if it did. Number two, you make a lot of mucus. Mucus is another one of those things that seems like an inconvenience. Leaking from your nose, flying through the air when you sneeze, yuck. It's actually a very useful part of your body's natural processes, but how exactly does it work? Mucus is in fact a combination of water and protein. When you think of it like that, it doesn't sound so bad. The idea is it keeps all your tubes nice and moist, giving an icky layer of protection. Vox compares it to flypaper, only instead of flies, you're inhaling dust, dirt, and other stuff from the outside world. How much mucus is produced by a human body on a daily basis? 1.5 quarts. Little hairs known as cilia shift the majority of the mucus to the back of the throat. You also swallow a lot of it, consuming it like a phlegm milkshake. Disgusting. Don't be too grossed out though. This goop has trapped all the stuff that's entered your airways and that all gets broken down in your tummy by enzymes. Not a reassuring thought, but kind of good to know. Number one, you will eat yourself to death. Of course, those enzymes we mentioned aren't always our friends. Once we've passed away, our bodies don't function properly. And like any workplace, when the boss is away, the employees run rampant. Enzymes that should be doing their thing down in the basement start to break loose. But how does that happen? McGill takes a deep dive into the human body, writing that cells are effectively containers as much as the building blocks of life. They use the example of the lysosome, which they refer to as the cell stomach. These play host to those hungry enzymes, keeping them safe and inside the sac. Organs, such as the liver, feature many lysosomes. When blood ceases to pump around the body, it isn't getting rid of stuff like carbon dioxide, and an abundance of acidic carbon dioxide leads to some lysosomes breaking and releasing enzymes. Ordinarily, they should be locked up tight, but now they're chomping down on your insides. Not that you care, you're dead, right? Thanks for watching. Are there any other weird facts about the human body that you want to know about? Let me know in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time. Bye.